Good morning, family. Um, this is Frank, you know, views from the man cave. Uh, what's good? Good morning. Uh, it's good Friday. You know what I mean? If you're someone who, um, who celebrates that, that's your, um, if that's a part of your faith and practice, um, happy good Friday to you. Um, but uh, but it's, it's all good. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty good out here. Um, I'm in the DMV. I live in uh, Southern Maryland. Um, but I work in the city in D.C., but <clears throat> I'm repping the DMV. That's, for those who are not in the know, that's, uh, that's Southern Maryland, um, the entire Washington, D.C., and Northern Virginia. So um, it's, it's nice out, man. You know, we've had the last, these last few days have been pretty good as far as weather. It's been in the high, it's been in the 70s for the most part, the last two or three days. Um, we got a little bit of rain yesterday, but it's all good. Um, so just want to say peace good morning um, shout out to all the supporters of the channel shout out to the subs you know i love y'all have much respect for y'all you know what i mean if y'all family if i if i rep for you if i have a lot of love and support um from you then you know who you are you know what i mean it's just too many people to talk about all the time and so you know excuse me for you know if i've you know put names and and um stuff out there and i didn't say yours but you know if you if you're close to me man if you have my respect then you know it because I, I don't have any problems or shame showing it and, and letting you know how I feel so shout out to y'all and um, so today um I just want to talk about about traveling man about getting out there I know right now because of the virus excuse me I know because of the virus a lot of things are shut down there's really no traveling but when this virus subsides and um, and when things kind of get back to normal or get as close to normal as possible, um, I want you to strongly consider traveling. You know what I mean? I want you to strongly consider, um, if you don't have one already, getting your passport and start traveling, man. Start seeing the world, you know? Um, as human beings, especially as men, man, we have dominion. You know what I mean? And it's kind of hard to believe that you have dominion over this world if you've never seen it, you've never been anywhere. Man, the world is bigger than your neighborhood. You know what I mean? It's bigger than your borough. You know what I mean? It's bigger than your city. So if you get an opportunity, man, you know, get you a passport and start traveling. Um, the first time I traveled overseas, I was 17 years old. Um, I met this brother, you know, when I was, uh, when I was growing up in Raleigh, uh, where I'm from. Um, I grew up, man, I was a hood baby. I grew up in the, in the hood. You know, my family was from the hood um my mom was a single mom so we bounced around a little bit you know so all of them if i didn't live in if i didn't live in i was pretty much i lived in or was affiliated with every hood in raleigh especially on the south side and if you're from there you know what those places are the terrace you know southgate shavers heights halifax court you know you know what i'm talking about but um so you know, in my school, you know, I was in, I was in junior high at the time. And um, I met this brother, man. You know, he came in, he started doing this after school program. And he started, you know, pulling a lot of the brothers together. And that was the first time I ever received like knowledge itself. I was like maybe 13 years old. And, um, and when he gave it to me, man, you know, it really, it changed my life. It changed my outlook on everything. You know, I knew as a kid that what I was being told wasn't right. You know, it didn't feel right. It didn't. It didn't make me want to be right. You know what I mean? And um, so, when this brother gave me this knowledge, man, you know, of who I am and where I come from, you know, I took a hold of it, man. I was. I was so um, attracted to it, and I was so, you know, drawn to it that it consumed me, man. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't want to be in anybody's streets. You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't want to do a lot of the things that my that my brothers and, you know, and my homies were doing in the streets. I didn't want to do it. <clears throat> I didn't want to do it because, you know, that knowledge, man, it just it just consumed me. You know what I mean? And it, and it made me want to learn more. And so this brother in this after school program, he gave us a lot of basic stuff. You know what I mean? About basic about um, people that, you know, are staples that we already know, you know, King, Malcolm, you know, Frederick Douglass, people like that. But then to the side, 
he would pull me to the side and he would just give me, you know, a lot of game about, you know, people that we, I wasn't, um, I wasn't being taught about. You know, Nat Turner, Denmark Vesey, Ida B. Wells, Sojourner Truth, um, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, um, you know, the, the most, I mean, the honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, Noble Drew Ali, people like that. And then some of the people who were coming up, you know, who were doing that thing at that time, you know, Dr. Phil Valentine, Dr. Claude Anderson, Dr. Francis Crest Wilson, Dr. Kaba, um, you know, so how was I lead people like that? So I was drawn to it. And, um, you know, it just, it, it just became a, a very important part of my life. And um, that's all I wanted to do was read and just build with brothers who, who had similar thinking, you know, who had that same knowledge and people that I could gain knowledge from. And so the first time I went on an international trip, I went with this, with, with him, um, you know, my mentor, you know, my abbot. And, um, and so he took a group of us, you know, to Africa, to, um, to Ghana. And I was about 17 years old. And um, it was one of the greatest trips of my life. You know what I mean? At the time, obviously it was the greatest trip of my life, but you know, I went to, I went to Ghana and um, I was there for about two weeks. And um, we just city hopped a little bit. We went to three different cities. I was in um, Accra, you know, shout out to Accra. Uh, Kumasi and uh, and Cape Coast and um, had a lot of fun out there man learned a lot you know um, W.E.B. Du Bois is buried out there um, so I had a chance to go to his house you know his uh, he's um, he's still he's buried on he's buried on his property so you get to see that um, they have his uh, his authentic uh, cap and gown from Harvard is there and um, so I did that um, I went to Elmina you know the slave castles and um you know, walked on the beach, and um, you know, for me it was a, it was a it was a bug out, man. It tripped me out because being from Raleigh, you know, um, there's not really a lot of black people there. So when you move around, like when you're in school and stuff like that, there's really not a lot of black people. So, you know, we thought we were deep in the classroom if there were five or six black people in it. You know, we thought we were in there heavy, but you know, when you go home, man, you go to Africa, and it just made me feel like home. The people at the airport when we got off the plane people were just like welcome home and was you know shaking my hand and you know, letting me know i was home and that felt good man you know no cap like you know no homo like i cried a lot man. <laughs> i can't remember the, the, the last time i cried that much you know just being home in africa man and, and, and just taking it all in and everywhere i went everybody was black you know what i mean the judges were black the lawyers were black the bankers were black, the, you know, the politicians were black, you know, the police chief was black, everybody was black, 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 black everywhere, you know what I mean, I can't, I could probably count on one hand and have fingers left over of how many white people I saw when I was there, and um, I had a great time, man, you know, I donated, you know, donated, went to some of the schools, like, went to some of the uh, primary and secondary schools, <laughs> Went to some colleges there, you know, built with, um, just had a chance to build with some kids, you know, some students my age. Um, you know, i tell you this too, man. If, if, if you're looking to, you know, build a business and, and, and get your foot in on the business side of the game, you know, go to Africa, man. Africa's the plug. You know what I mean? I went there and um, I remember a sister that I went with, um, she wanted to get her hair done. She wanted to get her hair braided up. And um, so we went to the salon. And um, so we went to the salon and they braided this they braided this sister's hair like two and a half, three hours, man. It was like five or six women on her head, like just braiding her hair in section. Everybody had a section and they were just killing it. And it was dope, you know what I mean? And I ain't never seen nothing like that. And uh, But Africa is the plug, man. If you're trying to start a business and you need some capital, or you need some some resources, um, invest in the motherland, man. Invest in Africa, man. Because really, black people in America, everybody emulates us. Even our brothers and sisters on the continent. They emulate us, they emulate our style, our gear, our fashion, you know, our swagger, our music, everything. So, if you can't get it here, if, you know, if the dominant society won't plug you in here, and, you know, to 
honestly, as, as far as I'm concerned, they shouldn't. You know, if, if, they're, if they're practicing racism, it's not their job to give you anything. You know what I mean? Because giving you something takes away from their power, from their dominance. So if they won't give it to you, man, go back home and get it. You know what I mean? But, but man, we had a lot of fun there, man, and um, did a lot of cool things. And I uh, met a lot of cool people. And, um, and so after that, I just started, you know, that started my love for traveling. You know what I mean? I had a passport at 17. I had already gone to Africa. Um, Soon after that, I joined the military. I traveled a little bit. Um, I, was, I lived in Korea for a year, South Korea. Um, that was dope. And um, then I settled down in D.C. And, um, and then I started traveling nonstop. When I got out of the military, man, I started traveling. Like, I've been to, so far in my life, I've been to five continents. You know what I mean? I've been to every continent except Antarctica and... Um, and Australia, and I'm definitely going to hit them up, you know what I mean, but as a black man, you need to travel, you need to get out and see this world, man, and build, you know what I mean, on a myriad of levels, number one, you want to see, you're going to realize that the world is different, you know, some things are the same, but a lot of it's not, man, you know what I mean, the world is bigger than your neighborhood, and the only way for you to know that is for you to go and, and, and see it for yourself, travel man you know connect with brothers in other places like i said i've been a lot of places man. actually right now um i'm supposed to be in greece right now i'm supposed to be in uh in athens greece but you know because of the virus they shut everything down so um travel man get your passport travel you know i've been to korea i've been to uh i've been to to europe places in europe um I've been to um, places in South America. Um, I've been to, um, what else? I've been to Africa, obviously. I've been a lot of places, man. You know, hit up a lot of islands, man. Jamaica, um, my wife and I got married in Jamaica. We eloped to Jamaica. Been to Turks and Caicos, um, the DR. Um, all over, I've been to Japan. I've been to, to um, to London, um, a lot of places, man, a lot of places. <clears throat> so get out and travel, man. This world is big. It's yours. You know what I mean? Do what you got to do to get there, man. Stack your money up, get you a passport and travel, but just go, man. It's an experience that you'll never forget. You know what I mean? The people, the food, the culture, especially especially Africa, man. I'm, I'm You know what? I'm going to zone in on Africa because... You know, if you're a black person, that's your pilgrimage. That's your hodge as a black person. You need to go to Africa. I don't care what continent. I don't care what continent you, I mean, um, excuse me. I don't care what country you decide to go to. Um, but just go. The Gambia, you know, Nigeria, um, South Africa, Mozambique, I mean, Kenya. I don't care where you go. Sierra Leone. I don't care where you go. Just go. And see it for yourself, man. And, and you're going to feel good about it, man. You're going to have fun. You know what I mean? And you'll learn a lot. You'll learn a lot about yourself. Um, you know, that's why we're in the condition that we're in as people. Because, you know, we don't know about ourselves. We don't know who we are. You know what I mean? We, you know, we have a, we have a general, basic, um, novice understanding of who we are. But we really don't know. When you go to Africa and you plug into that, man, it's, 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 it's going to change your life. So, I mean, just travel. I don't care. You know, go somewhere, man. Experience different things. Eat different food and, you know, absorb different energy. But travel. You know what I mean? That's your nature. As black people, you know, African people, we, we've circumvented the globe. You know, that's not, a, that's not a place on this earth we haven't discovered or haven't been to. You know, last year, I... Um, I had a chance to go to Spain. I went to Spain last year, <clears throat> and I had a lot of fun doing that. You know what I mean? Because, you know, if you understand your history, man, that's that's Moors. That's the Moors kingdom, man. We, you know, we civilized that. You know, we civilized this world, man. We brought a lot of culture and and you know and everything to this world, man. Religion, mathematics, everything, everything that you see out here in this world, 
It came from the mind of, a, of somebody who was black. It came from the mind of somebody who looked just like you, who has your lips and your nose and, and, and your mannerisms. You know what I mean? This is yours, man. We, you know, we are the original man of this earth. Period. I mean, there's there's no one that predates black people. There's nothing that predates the empires of Africa, of Kemet, of, of Mali, of, of Kush, of Nubia. There's no there's no non-black civilizations that predate that. That means everything you see came from us. It came from our mind. It came from our our um our heart. And everybody knows that too. Like when you when you travel, man, you see a lot of things. You see black Madonnas everywhere. You see black artwork everywhere. You see black nobility <clears throat> and black priesthood and black royalty everywhere. I mean everywhere. I mean in Europe. I mean in Asia. You know what I mean? I mean everywhere. Everybody knows who we are but us. And that's a good opportunity for you to tap into that by traveling, meeting different people. You know what I mean? Um, Cause we get a lot of love, man. When, when I was in Spain, um, you know, with, with my wife, everywhere we would go, people would just want to talk and, you know, look at us like we were different. You know what I mean? Like we were just like they hadn't, like it was something about us. You know what I mean? Every time I've gone overseas, I felt that. You know, people have looked at me like that, or treated me like that, or talked to me like that. And um, cause we're special, man. We're special people. You know. We, we don't know that, you know, in America and, and in other places too, you know, we have a lot of niggardry about us, but but everybody knows who we are. You know what I mean? That's why they work so hard to undermine us and sabotage us and, and you know, condition us to do these things to ourselves because they know who we are. You know what I mean? So travel, man, get out there, you know. Give this thing some time to kind of settle down you know what I mean? Because this virus at some point is going to subside, you know. Um, it still, it hasn't peaked yet. You know, I actually know people who, who've contracted it. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, they're in my mind and in my heart. And um, so th at, at a certain point, you know, this thing will subside. And, um, and it'll get better. And then we'll be able to get back to, you know, some level of, 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 of normal. And when we do that, man, just strongly consider traveling, man. Strongly consider, you know, getting your passport. It don't take that much, you know. You apply for it, you pay for it, you know. You're going to get your passport back in like four to six weeks. That's max. Most of the time you'll get it like two or three weeks. And just go, man. Just go and conquer this world and see it for yourself. And, um, and explore it. Because it's yours, man. You know what I mean? That's your wisdom, man. Every, everything that we have, you know, um, is God-given. You know what I mean? And um, that's our essence. You know what I mean? We, we, we have no, we are, we're grafted from God himself. There's no other man that we're grafted from. We're grafted from the creator of the universe. And when you know that, you got to move like that. So travel. <laughs> Get your mind right, man. See this world, man, because it's yours. Explore it, circumvent it, navigate it. You know what I mean? Put your stake down. Um, one of the things that I want to do at a certain point in my life, man, like when, when my kids are grown, um, I'm going to really pursue dual citizenship. And, um, and I think I want to move to Africa. I, I, I do. I, I really feel like... At a certain point in my life, once once I know my kids are straight, like once they finish college and you know whatever type of schooling they go to, and once they're settled and they're good, um, you know I talked to my wife about it. When we 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 gonna be out, you know either we gonna live somewhere in Africa permanently, or we're gonna have property there and spend a lot of our time there. You know what I mean? Vacation and have a you know a vacation home and spend maybe three months, six months out of the year in Africa somewhere, somewhere, wherever, you know, I decide, wherever, you know, we end up. Um, but uh, it's a beautiful thing to travel. It's a beautiful thing to see yourself, to go all over this world, and wherever you go, you see yourself. You know, it brings a certain level of esteem to you, a certain level of confidence, 
to be able to circumvent this globe and see yourself in everything, see your influence everywhere. You know what I mean? But there's certain things that you have to do in order to do that. You gotta be on your square home. You know what I mean? You have to have your money right. You know what I mean? You have to have a, a, a proper mindset, you know, to do these things. You know what I mean? Life is more than clothes. It's more than a car. You know what I mean? Um, to me, the biggest thing in life, man, is, 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 is memories, and, you know, opportunities. Because when I'm 105 years old and I'm on my deathbed and I have every, all my family around me, I'm not going to remember some car I bought when I was 22. You know what I mean? I'm not going to remember some fly leather jacket I bought, you know what I mean, when I was 25. I'm going to remember the places I went. I'm going to remember the people that I've met. I'm going to remember going to Africa. I still talk about Africa like I just went, I just came back two days ago. You know, my brother went, shout out to my brother. Every time I talk to him on the phone, we talk about it. Like it just happened, like we were just there last week. All of, all of the trips I've been on, you know, with my wife, all of the places that we've gone, I've taken her. Those are memories that I'll never forget. Um, we have a married couple friend, you know, we have um, some couple friends that, um, you know, they hadn't really been anywhere, so we took them out. You know, I think we took them out, we flew them out to Vegas. Um, you know, they didn't have to pay nothing. We, we bought the flight, we bought the, we bought the suite. We just all hung out in Vegas on our dime. You know what I mean? Just, you know, and, on, and we had fun. And doing stuff like that makes me feel good. You know what I mean? Not only experiencing things, but being in a position to help other people experience stuff. You know what I mean? Um, um, our kids, um, their godmom is, is my wife's best friend. And she had a birthday last year. And we just, you know, she hadn't um, been a lot of places in a long time. So I just said, hey, let's just, you know, you and her, y'all go to Miami for a week, you know. We we'll set everything up, you know, y'all go, you know, mess up some commas, have fun in Miami. You know, we had been before, but she hadn't gone. And, and so they went down there for her birthday, man, and she had a great time, man. You know, my wife told me how much she cried and how much she enjoyed the trip, you know, going to Little Haiti and going on all these tours and eating good and, you know, Little Havana and all that. And, and you know, it was great. It made me feel good. I didn't even go. And uh, it made me feel good, man. So it's something about going different places, man, experiencing different things. You know, if you go international, man, if you're black, the first place I would tell you to go, or one of the main places I would tell you to go is Africa. I don't care what country, pick one, go. Um, but go to all of them. But I, I would definitely go to Africa. Um, if you go in the States, man, places I love to travel in the States. Um, my favorite place, my favorite trip in the States is New Orleans, man. I love New Orleans. Um, it's a beautiful place, man. There's no better food in the world, in my opinion, than New Orleans. I mean, just the whole energy, man. I love going to places in the States that have their own culture, their own slang, their own music, their own food, their own culture, their own style of dress. You know, a lot of places didn't have that. You know, I grew up in North Carolina, like I said, and um, we didn't really have that, you know, for a long time. We kind of developed it over time, but we didn't really have our own sound, our own thing. So depending, you know, and a lot of people would move to North Carolina. Like when I was in high school, a lot of my friends weren't from Raleigh or you know, North Carolina. They were from New York. They were from Philly. They were from Connecticut. They were from, you know, Florida, you know, because at that time, North Carolina, and it still is, it's a, it was a hotbed for people to move, you know. Um, it was a great place to raise children. The cost of living was cheap. Um, so a lot of people migrated to North Carolina. So a lot of my friends weren't from there. Um, but New Orleans is, my, is one of my favorite places in the States. Um, I loved Hawaii. Shout out to Hawaii. Um, L.A. Um... There's no place like LA either, man. I've, I've been a lot of places, especially Compton, man. Compton is like, Compton is, I've never experienced anything like that, man. Shout out to Compton, man. It, it's, it is, 
its own world, man. But um, but uh, definitely New Orleans. You know what I mean? If you haven't been to New Orleans, you need to go, man. Just to eat. If you don't do nothing but eat uh, the the char broil oysters and get you a beignet or something, you know, if you just for even the Popeyes chicken tastes better. It tastes different. You know what I mean? If you like Popeyes chicken, man. But just travel, man. New York, you no know, Philly. Um, D.C., man. D.C. is... It, that's where it's, I mean, D.C. is on point, too. We got our own sound, man. Go-Go is, is all over, man. You know, our food... Nobody really does seafood, man. Like crab on the, on the crab side of the game. Nobody really does it like D.C. But New York, Philly. Philly's close. I have family in Philly. Um, <clears throat> our wife and I love it. You know, we go see our family. Sometimes we'll be at home, and especially before the kids, and we'll just be sitting there hungry. And we'll just, like trying to figure out what to eat and I'll just put in a car and say let's just drive to Philly get a cheesesteak you know what I mean let's just drive two hours to Philly just to get a cheesesteak and a hoagie and hang out and come and see our see our aunties and come right back so um, Miami is popping too but there are a lot of other places man Memphis Atlanta you know what I mean um, Chicago I've been to Indianapolis too Indianapolis is cool um, but just travel man get out man See this world, man. It's yours. It belongs to you. Go see it, man. Experience it. You know what I mean? But uh, but definitely, man. If you're trying to island hop, if you're trying to go to the islands, um, Turks and Caicos is on point. Um, I've been to Bermuda. It was cool, but it was very expensive in in uh, Bermuda. Very expensive, but it, it it's a nice place. Um, Jamaica is on point. Like I said, I got married there. We eloped. Uh, Ocho Rios beautiful beautiful place man culture energy all that you know so um if you're trying to go to south america man you got a lot of you got you know you got colombia you got belize you know costa rica any anywhere man but just wherever you decide man just decide and go and and experience it man and just enjoy this life man it, 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 it's sad when i see people live a full life and they haven't went nowhere they haven't went anywhere you know what I mean? Or, or, or they get hype about going to some club. The way a lot of people get hype about going to a club or a lounge or something like that, that's how I get hype about traveling. I live to travel, man. I, I, if I'm not traveling, I'm planning a trip. If I'm not somewhere, I'm planning to go somewhere. You know what I mean? So you'll have fun, man. You'll have fun. And when you go... Um, outside of the fun stuff, outside of, you know, your typical beach and, you know what I mean, and your excursions and stuff like that. Outside of that, you know, get some culture up in you. Everywhere I go, like my wife, she's more, she loves the beach. You know, she's, she's a water baby. She loves the beach. She loves putting her, her toes in the sand, walking around. That's what she loves. Me, I enjoy that too, but I enjoy the culture. So every time we go on a trip... I know she got to get the beach. You know, we're going to go to the beach. We're going we're gonna to drink good, eat good, hang out on the beach. But I'm going to get some culture. I'm going to go to a museum. I'm going to go to some national monuments. And I always seek out the African presence wherever I go. When I was in Spain, um, I went to museums. You know, I went to, uh, you know, see the Black Madonna. You know what I mean? Obviously, in Africa, you're going to get that anyway. But everywhere you go, man. South Korea, we're everywhere. You know, get some culture up in you. You'll realize that too. When you go, you'll see that there's no place on this planet you can go travel where there's no black presence. Somebody black lived there and did something great. You know what I mean? I don't care where you go. Somebody black is from there, lived there, looks just like you, and did something great. And did something that will be remembered forever. I don't care where you go. And that's the beauty in it. Because everything out here belongs to us anyway. We just don't know that yet. We don't act like it because we don't know. But when you get out there and you see it, man, I don't care where you go. South America, North America, Africa, Asia, Europe. And you just Google or you just, you know, go to a, a, a tour guide or something and say, hey, man, you know, I need something African. I need to go somewhere where there's a, there was an African presence. And you'll find a lot of places. I don't care where you go. And you'll find it. You know, I went to St. Croix. I went to, um, you know, a lot of different places, man. And everywhere I went, there was an African presence there. Everywhere. Somebody black did something great. 
That's who we are, man. We're great, man. We're, we're, we're greatness. We just got to tap into that. So, man, I love y'all, man. You know, I hope y'all have a good weekend. Happy Good Friday to you. You know what I mean? Be safe. You know, this coronavirus thing is still serious. You know, act like that. If you out, put a mask on. Keep your distance. Wash your hands. You know what I mean? Um, be safe. All right? Till next time. One.